Hello everyone and welcome back. Now, I want to start this lecture series by looking at one dimensional systems. So remember I gave you in the previous video, I said x1 dot is equal to a function, x2 dot is equal to a function, x3 dot, so on and so forth. We're gonna use one state variable, x1, okay? So that means that I'm always going to, uh, at least for this lecture and, and a lot of the ones going forward, I'm going to look at equations that look like this, all right? So n is equal to one to start with. We need to build intuition here. And in particular, the intuition that I want to show off in this short lecture is the geometric intuition of flows on the line, okay? So let me start with an example. So you might have encountered something similar to this and maybe even in a calculus class, but certainly in an ordinary differential equations class. You know, it's a simple little equation. Time derivative of x is equal to sine of x, right? So, might need a little refresher on how to do this, but we could use separation of variables. Okay, so this is one of those techniques that we're given early on, again, maybe in calculus, I have an entire calculus video on it if you need a refresher. I also have a video from my Ordinary Differential Equations lecture series. We can use separation of variables to solve this thing, okay? So if you remember, it comes down to turning the derivative dx dt here into sort of a fraction and then separating out the x and the t components uh, from each side and integrating. And, okay, so if you go through the steps, again, I don't wanna rehash it too much because honestly, it's not really that interesting. You get cosecant of x, so, the, sorry, the natural logarithm of the absolute value of cosecant of x plus cotangent of x is equal to t plus c. Oh, that is truly, truly awful to look at, but, yeah, let's keep pushing. So then let's suppose at t equal to zero, we have x of zero is equal to x naught. Remember, I said that differential equations come in two pieces. They come with the equations that govern. Okay, so that's good. I got my equations. They also need an initial condition. I need to know where the pendulum starts swinging, for example. So imagine I have some initial state, could be anything. Well, you know, you could, you could actually solve for the value of C, this integration constant here, and you get this truly, truly awful looking implicit curve, okay? Let me write it out for you, just so you can be repulsed by it. And what I wanna do with this example is I wanna convince you that the geometric interpretation of dynamical systems is so much better. Because if I say that's the solution to the differential equation, what are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna make heads or tails of that? I mean, the first part is, this is an implicit solution, right? T is isolated as a function of x, but the original problem was given as x as a function of t. Okay, so that tells me absolutely nothing, right? I have no idea what solutions do this thing look like? How do they behave, right? If I start somewhere uh, particular, what happens to the solution? Where do I go? Where do I evolve to? Where did I come from? Nothing from this. So here's the alternative I wanna provide for you. Now, you may have seen this in one of my previous videos, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plot x versus f of x. Okay, so f of x is the right-hand side. This is essentially plotting x versus its derivative. Let's do it. So, I'm basically just plotting a sine curve in this case. So, Honestly, that's one of the best sine curves I've ever drawn in my entire life. I know that it's not that great, but, but it's better than almost any other one I've drawn. 
Okay, let's use some information, okay? So info that we can carry forward. One. Now, without knowing what the actual solution is, we do know this. If f of x is positive, this means that the derivative of my solution, no matter where it is, is also positive, which implies that I'm increasing, right? Basic calculus. Derivative is positive means I'm going up. So, okay, that's something interesting. Let's denote that on my picture. Remember this picture? Sorry, I didn't label it. This is x versus, say, x dot equal to f of x. Okay, so everywhere that f of x is positive, I'm flowing to the right. Okay, so I'm positive, you know, here between 0 and pi. I'm flowing to the right. I'm going to denote it with rightward arrows to tell me I'm moving right, right? So the value of x is moving right at those points. Similarly over here, moving right. Okay, what else can I say? Well, I could go the other direction. I say if I'm negative, then my derivative is negative, which tells me I'm decreasing. Okay. So that tells me everywhere that I, my f is negative, I'm decreasing. I'm sort of moving to the left on this line, right? Think of, you know, I'm, I'm stuck. My values of x are stuck along this line. So if I'm decreasing, that means I'm moving to the left on the line. If I'm increasing, it means I'm moving to the right on the line. That's it. I can only go left and right. There's nowhere else to go. I'm stuck on a line. Okay, well then, we might as well put the third one in. If f of x is equal to zero, my derivative is equal to zero. This implies no movement. Or maybe I'm turning around. Derivative is zero, not moving. And that is at this point right here. It's so at this point right here. It's so at this point right here. This one. I think I have one more. Basically at every single multiple of pi. Now, let's put some nomenclature in. This is called a fixed point. Now, you're going to hear me use a whole bunch of different words for this as we go through. And hopefully, if I just keep using all the different ones, you will get more of an understanding of what's going on or, or using these fluidly as well, okay? So some people used to call them fixed points. Some people call them a steady state. Some people call them an equilibrium, right? These are all perfectly valid ways of talking about this that I'm going to use interchangeably. And I will, you know, I'll clarify as we start talking about it, but eventually it'll become second nature. For now, let's call them fixed points, okay? Okay, so what have I done? I've drawn a picture with a bunch of arrows. How can this be used to help me? Well, let's do this. Let's say suppose x of zero is equal to pi over four. Okay, so I start at pi over four. That's somewhere in here. Let's draw what the solution would look like as time goes on, okay? So again, I've got the exact solution, but how is that gonna help me, right? I have no idea what that tells me. So let's see if this picture can tell me more. If I start, say, at pi over four, what does this tell me? Okay, so I start here, and the arrows tell me, well, at pi over four, f of x is positive, that means I'm initially going up. And in particular, I just, keep going up and up. Maybe I beat pi over two. I'm still going up because my derivative is still positive. I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up. And it looks like I'm going to run into this dot, right? Now, take a look at this. I can't go through the dot because as soon as I cross that fixed point, I get pushed the other direction, right? So you can imagine you're sort of like resisting like the, the air or something like that. Here, the air is behind you. The wind, it's pushing you forward. 
Whereas as soon as you get to that dot, you're stuck because the air, the wind is pushing in against you. I can't go forward anywhere because it says I'm always going to the left. So that sort of gives me a limit on where I can go. It tells me I'm not going past pi. And in particular, this tells me that I'm going to continue to increase until I hit pi. That's what I get for my solution. So in particular, x of t is approaching pi as t goes to infinity. That's what's happening here, okay? This is what's called a phase line diagram. And it can help you to find the behavior of solutions anywhere. For example, if I started above pi, but lower than two pi, I am just going to flow down into pi. If I started over here, I'm just going to flow to minus pi right here. So I've got pi, two pi, minus two pi, right? I can see everything that's happening here. And here's the beauty. As long as you can plot f of x, you can do this for any equation you want, right? I never have to solve these things anymore. Separation of variables, goodbye. I don't need it, right? I've got this beautiful geometric perspective. Pick your favorite function, f of x, and try and plot a phase line diagram. Eventually, you're going to get so good at this, you're not even going to have a vertical axis here. You're just going to give me the line. Hopefully that's where we're going to get to, right? And you can tell me everything from that. You pick an initial condition. I pick an initial condition here. Where am I going? I'm going, I'm flowing down to minus pi. If I pick an initial condition over here, I'm flowing down to minus three pi. Pick one in here, I'm flowing up to minus pi. Now, you can get all kinds of information from this graph, but there is some information that is missing. For example, it's purely geometric. I don't know what this equation is. I, well, technically I do. It's you know, something related to this with x not equal to pi over 4. But to me, this is interpretable. That is not interpretable. But this comes at the cost of not knowing the exact function. Okay? So you should be careful. We are sort of doing math, but by feeling around the outsides instead of just you know, grabbing our hammer and nailing something in. But nonetheless, this gives us all the information that we need a lot of the time. In dynamical systems, you ask questions like, where are you going? What will happen if I go backwards in time? We don't care as much about exact numbers and exact solutions. We care about the fate of lots of things. You know, we talk about fixed points. These are these sort of blocking points, these sort of rapid or these rocks in the middle of the river. They're the things that catch you. We really care about if you wind up at a fixed point. So for example, if you go into pi or you come out of zero, you know, what's happening here? Which ones are pulling you in? So look at everybody's getting sucked into pi. Everybody's getting pushed away from zero. That's interesting information for me, right? Because if I wanted to wind up at zero, it's telling me I can't do it unless I uh, sit at zero. That is an important piece of this equation, okay? So I want you to understand the limitations. Don't have exact solutions, but frankly, don't care. What I do have is a beautiful way of plotting things and analyzing these things geometrically that we're gonna carry through as we go into the next section. And in the next video, I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about fixed points. Like I said, these are the things that we care about. These are where you wind up, for example, pi. They are where you come from, for example, zero. And they really describe the macroscopic qualitative features of these one-dimensional flows. So next lecture, we're talking fixed points only.